and welcome to this little tutorial about how to weave a houndstooth scarf on a rigid heddle loom. So first off, a houndstooth pattern is a very simple pattern. It's basically a two by two pattern. You, you need to have something with a very high contrast to be able to see a houndstooth properly. I like, to, I like the graphic look. Now you can use very similar yarns, you'll just end up with a very subtle look. They're both shiny and what we're going to do now is we're going to direct warp this loom. So I've got the loom clamped on to my coffee table and I have the, this is called the apron bar. This rolls on to the back loom just like that. I don't want it too tight at the moment actually so I'll just unclip this a little bit. And this is a Ashford 16 inch rigid heddle loom. It's an Ashford from New Zealand. I bought it from Wing and Woolworks in the UK. Um, so I can get about uh, 14 and a half inches of fabric off of this loom. Now I like to have a little bit of um, elastic just holding these together while I'm doing the warping. It keeps the tension as nice as I can. Um, it's quite convenient. Now this <laughs> elastic has broken several times, so here's hoping it's not gonna happen again. <laughs> And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using this hook tool to direct warp from this part all the way over here to a peg that I've just tied to the windowsill. I usually start from one side and move over to the other, but this time I'm going to actually start from the center out. Um, I don't think, it'll just mean I have an extra knot at the start, but seeing as those are cut anyway at the end um, of the warping process, I don't really mind how many knots I have. Um, so I'm going to just use this technique just to see if it makes a difference in my tension. So I'm using the large section, the large hook to go through the slots, a slot here in the middle. And I'm picking that up and I'm pulling it through. So a hands tooth pattern is essentially a two by two um, threading pattern. So you tie on your threads and every time you're pulling threads through the heddles, you're pulling, if you're doing this direct warping method like I am, you are pulling two threads through each slot. So you've got a silver one on this one and a, and a dark one on this one. And you're going to continue across silver, silver, navy, silver, navy, light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, all the way across. So this is my warp. I am threaded up into each of the slots. I've got two threads coming out of each slot, which is just a really long loop pulled through. And I am going to, look at this sparkle on it already. Um, I'm going to um, roll it onto the other side and use some brown paper that's on the couch back there. And then I'm going to thread these ends into the holes. So what we need is every second thread needs to go into a hole and every other thread then goes leaves is left in the slot. And that's how you get your up down. That's so you bring up half and you bring down half when you're sliding the shuttle through. So I'm about to wind on the warp now. So winding on the warp, I've got my paper underneath here. I've got a roll of paper. They're just paper bags. I've got a roll of them in here. They're gonna wind on as I go. And I've got my, my warp it's all tied up into this little handy chain, which me means it's just handy to kind of control. It's the, the loom is still, um, it's still clamped onto the board, onto the table there now. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be trying to even out the tension across the warp. I don't know if my experiment worked starting in the middle because now just the middle seems a bit saggy. So it seems like no matter where I start, <laughs> that's going to be looser than the rest. So I just have to be quite, um, just a little bit uh, careful about the centre of the loom. So I've now brushed it all out just with my hands and I can see that nothing is overlapping there and it all seems pretty, pretty evenly tensed, tensioned 
and then I'm just going to wind it on. Just making sure that the paper isn't too uh, caught up. fully wound on. Now it is my job to um, thread the heddle properly. Now what does that mean? That means that I need to use this smaller tool to thread the holes, the holes here. I need to take, there's two threads in each of the slots and so now I need to pop them into the holes. Um, yeah, so there's going to be a time lapse on this because it takes a while. <laughs> but I'll show you what I'm doing to start and then I'll time lapse it. Okay, so what I want to do is separate out the yarn that's in one slot there. So I'm just making sure that if you go up and down with these, you can see that this one here is on the outside, so this is up higher. So I'm just going to pop this into the um, hole to the right. Just like a little hook there and that hooks through. I'm gonna pop that up and away out of the way. So that's what I'm doing all the way across. Making sure that I have my, um, making sure I have two and two. So one light in a hole, one light in a slot, one dark in a hole, one dark in a slot. So that is all the th all the threads are now um, threaded. All of the warp threads. So when I gather them together, half of them come up when I pull it up, and half of them go down when I pull it down. Perfect, lovely. So now I need to tie them onto the apron bar here, just to make it easier. Little, these little um, elastics make it an awful lot easier just to keep them equal. Just little elastics. You can use hair bands or whatever. It just, you know, you don't have to be worrying about them. So, mm, yeah. So you go over. I yeah, know. Lay them over. Then you bring them through. And that's, then you tie a knot. Just an overhand knot. All right. Okay, and you do that all the way across. Now, so this is all set up. It's ready to go. I'm ready to weave. Mm. We need to spread out the yarn so it's equal. See on this side over here, it's nice and equal once it's through the heddle. But we also need it that sort of same um, spread out tension that on this side. So to do that, you need to roll it on a little bit. Mm. And it's best to set up the warp with using a thread that's different. Like this is a wool, um, a wool and nylon and stellina blend, and this is actually a linen. It's a Lithuanian linen that I wove um, with before, so there's still quite a lot on it here, which is nice because I want to get rid of it. I don't want to. I want to use it. I don't want to um, just chop it off. So <clears throat> I'm going to bring up the heddle. That looks good. A bit later for doing anything now. I'm just going to bring that down. And tap it down. Oh, 
Okay, you able to see that a little bit better? Yeah. So this is now spread out. So this is nice and even, even as the other side. So now I'm ready to start actually weaving with the thread I want. So I need a little scissors and I'm just gonna snip that off. Done. So now I need to load my two um, shuttles with my yarn. So this is, these are the two yarns that I'm going to be weaving with. So I have, I have used uh, just slightly less than 50 grams to warp this loom. This loom's warp is approximately two and a half meters. I probably, I'll probably come out with two. I'll, I'll underestimate and go with two meters. And uh, there is about 60 grams left in this one and 53 grams left in this one. I have my kitten companion and I have my weaving. So I'm going to start off with the silver and I'm going to do a couple of a couple of rows of silver, maybe 10 rows of silver. I'll start off and hopefully finish off on silver. But to start your weaving, you always want to leave a tail of about four lengths. And this is for your um, binding off. When you're binding off, it's best to, you can do it at the start or you can do it at the end. I always I always manage to forget, so I uh, do it at the end a lot of the time, but you can do it either way. I want to, I really want to just get into the weaving though, so I'm just gonna leave it to the end. So I'm just going to make sure that I have enough spread for four. Four widths of whatever you're weaving is uh, perfectly adequate. If you want a little bit extra, do you know, leave a little bit extra. So. Yeah, I'm going to leave kind of five-ish, well, four and a half. So I'm just going to leave that to the side. Get rid of a few there. Nope, nope. Oh, no. Kitten. Cats are obsessed with this space in between. And, oh, God, they're just, like, impossible to get out then. Get out. It's like squeezing from a toothpaste, except the toothpaste has claws. I'm going to add in my black and I don't need to do anything with this one I'm just gonna leave it to the edge and I'll I'll weave that in at the end so up to start it really does not matter when you're starting anything um, when you're starting to weave you don't have to worry about which way you have to go first you just put it through whichever way and then you'll go from there on so this is the fun bit now this is when you start seeing that houndstooth pattern I'm really excited to see this on this fine yarn, actually. So you just switch over. Basically, you do over and back, switch over and back, switch over and back, and that's it. Okay, so in this clip, I'm just going to show you how to manage your shuttles when you're weaving a houndstooth pattern. So you can see the houndstooth pattern forming there. And I've just, the darker one is the, the darker, the navy is the last one that I went through. So I'm just going to pop through the um, the navy in the opposite direction. But first, what I'm going to do is just get to do a little rhythm and bringing the lighter thread closer to the, the heddles. Bring that across. Leave a little bit of space there. Move it up. And then bring this shuttle that I've just woven with closest to my belly so away from it and what that does is that helps when I'm going through the next time it makes a little loop that's going to catch the uh, darker yarn and help with this nice little edge that's coming up the side here I'll just show you that little edge so it's quite neat and tidy if you do that so I'll just do it one more time. <laughs> I really need to move this shuttle forward, but it's kind of handy to have this much space to show you. So this one actually <laughs> needs to come up and the one I've just finished weaving with needs to come down closest to my belly. Then this needs to go through there. I've got this loop. You're actually going to see it there. See that little, the dark part? 
coming across and that lighter yarn is actually holding the weft so that it keeps it a bit even. Lovely, lovely. And that's how you manage your shuttles. Bring that up. That's how you manage your shuttles during a hands tooth pattern. Ta da! The light is fading a little bit, so I've taken you over to the window, but this is the hands tooth design. So if you look far away, it looks quite complicated, but all it is, it's plain weave, just two and two. And it looks so effective. You know, you see these little black crosses and light crosses. So I've just done another, um, about two inches of just the, the gray. And now I'm going to hem stitch across um, using a very simple hem stitch technique. I think I will take every second. It'll take me a little while, but I'm going to do two at a time all the way across. <clears throat> This is the final piece. I haven't washed it yet now, but when I wash it, it will um, seal up, but it has shrunk down even now, just after taking it off tension. So you can see that it's a little bit holy, but it is still like a solid fabric now, so. Yeah, it's pretty, 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 and really simple to do. I hope you enjoyed this vlog, and um, yeah, do tag me if you make something from this vlog, from this little tutorial, because I'd love to see how useful you found it. All right, guys, see you later, bye.